You need to see this coin. It is a beauty. Check it out. 1909. If I flip it over, you will see at the base of this. Hey everybody, this is James and you're watching my channel, Catroll Hunter, and I have been negotiating a trade with a subscriber. Nicole reached out to me and said that she would love to get her hands on some older Canadian cents. Would I be interested in trading for some older American cents? And I was certainly interested in that. And I think if you've been watching my channel, you know I'm a huge advocate of trading. It's a really great way to engage with other collectors and to grow your collection without actually having to spend a lot of money going to coin stores and buying things like that. So if you can find somebody who has duplicates that you need and you have duplicates that they need, why not trade? It kind of reminds me of back in school when I was a kid with sports cards. That's what we used to do. We would open up our packs and we'd trade. That's what this is all about, collectors. You might have extras of one thing that someone else needs, so why not put them to good use? They're not going to do you much just sitting in a drawer, so uh, I'm really excited to get in here. Now, Nicole said that she had, I think, some really nice dates, some, some semi-key dates, some key dates, some older Lincoln cents, definitely things I would never find coin roll hunting here in Canada or would be very hard to come by, so I'm really excited to get in here. So I'm going to open up this package. We're going to see what we got. So I've gotten into that envelope and Nicole has given me not just some pennies, but we've got a magnet here from Wisconsin. So she's from Ripon, Wisconsin. And so uh, she's got something here for me that I can put up just to remember this trade and remember her and think of Wisconsin. And that's awesome. And she wrote me a little letter. I'm not going to read all of it. It's right here. But basically what she said is that uh, she had lots of fun going through her collection, She particularly the, the 1910s, 20s and 30s because she doesn't quite have as many of those. And so she sent those ones first to me and there are 35. And so that's 35 older wheat scents. So we know that what's in this bag is gonna be really exciting and exceptional. That is so very cool. And I'm gonna have a lot of fun going through my collection looking for coins to send Nicole in return. So I haven't actually done that yet. I've been a little bit busy, but Nicole said, that's okay, go ahead. I'm gonna put my stuff together and send it to you. So. Um, I got to do that, get my stuff together for Nicole. Probably by the time you're watching this video, I will have mostly done that. So in any case, I'm going to open this up carefully. We're going to take a look because we've got some old stuff in here. I'm super excited. So I got everything out of the package and I have sorted them out by uh, year and mint mark. And I know it kind of looks kind of crazy here, but there is a method. Um, and I have to say that going through coins like this feels like Christmas morning. It's incredible. Just looking through all the years and the mint marks, particularly with a group of really old coins. They're all old coins here. So how I've got it organized at the very top, this top row right here, which is just one coin, is the 1909. That's the first year Lincoln wheat sent. So we'll come to that. This next row is the teens. There's just a couple. The next row here is the 20s, and I've got them by mint mark, so it's P, D, and S, like that. And then this row here is the 30s, and then down below there are a couple from the 40s, and, uh, and then a few surprises and uh, odd ones here. So Nicole did say that she had a few surprises, and check it out, we had talked about trading for wheat cents, and there are three Indian head pennies, including the oldest one here, from 1895, that is awesome. One cent, you can see that. And then there's a couple more here from 1906 and 1907, and they're in great condition. I'll pull up this 1906 here. I'll show you this. You can probably see it's got full liberty in the headband. I'll throw it on the screen on the under the scope so you can take a peek. There it is, so we can see right there you can see all of the letters of Liberty. That's the high point of the coin. So this one is in remarkable condition for a nearly 120 year old coin. And then the last one is the 1907, the third one here. So that is really cool. And if we throw that one under the scope, you can see that there is still some definition. You can actually still make out all of the letters of Liberty. Not quite as clear as the last one, but again, um, most examples of Indian head pennies uh, 
that liberty is completely gone on the headband. So that is a really awesome surprise. So Nicole, thank you for that. That's really cool. I wasn't expecting that at all. Going through these other coins though, there are some that are, are in remarkable condition and probably surprisingly, the one that is in the best shape here is the 1909. You need to see this coin. It is a beauty. Check it out. If I just get the light on it, you can see all of the detail. 1909. If I flip it over, you will see at the base of this, this is the 1909 VDB. This is the lower mint one. Now, it's not the 1909 S. That would be super rare and super valuable. But the 1909 VDB is a key date. It's minted, I think, at about 26 or 27 million. But we'll take a closer look at this one too. All right, have a look at that. This one is in remarkable shape. Look at all of the detail on Lincoln's hair. It is a clean, clean coin. Those fields look great. It's got a little bit of circulation wear, of course, but I'm going to say this is probably in an XF or EF, depending on what country you're in. Um, and yeah, an extra fine. If I flip it over and we look at that, the uh, reverse looks great too. And there it is, that VDB at the base that caused a lot of controversy with the designer's initials being on the coin. They didn't reintroduce the VDB until 1918. And at that point in time, they put the VDB, I believe, at the base of Lincoln's portrait on the obverse. Um, so in 1909, there's the 09 VDB, the 09S VDB, and then there are the 09 versions without the VDB. And the VDB ones are the ones that are a little bit more sought after because uh, it was the controversial one that was replaced. So there it is, 1909 VDB, and that's just a beautiful coin. Wow, and certainly not one that I had in my collection. And uh, it would be remarkable if I ever found one of these in circulation in Canada, absolutely. Even in the States, this would be a hard one to come by as a first year Lincoln penny. So this is why trading is such a great opportunity to fill your collection in with things that you might not find or might not find where you are. And um, because coin roll hunting itself is a pretty random thing, you just never know what you're gonna get, you might very well find key dates or semi-key dates that you think are unlikely and that others haven't found. And you can trade with others for the things that they found that you haven't got. So I'm a huge advocate for trading. It's a great way to round out your collection without spending a fortune. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. So that is a wicked coin. So back up at the top in the teens, we've got a 1915. And this one's pretty worn. This is more like what you'd expect these coins to look like at this age. So this is probably average circulated condition, maybe even a bit better than average. Some of them are pretty toasty in those years. The other one from the teens is a 1919S, and this one is in great condition. Look at that, lots of detail on Lincoln. Very cool. When we get into the 20s here, this is where we start to see a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So there's a 20, a 20 Denver, and a 20 San Francisco. It's a little hard to see here. This is, it kind of looks a little bit like a D just with the naked eye, but when I put it under the scope, you can clearly see that is an S there. That just, it, because there's a rounded part here, it looks like it might be the D, but you can see the top of the S there. So that's really cool. And then back down, we've got a 21 and a 21S, a 1923, 24, 25. Again, look at all the detail. That 25 is remarkable. 26 Denver. 27, we've got 27, 27 Denver, 27 San Francisco, 28, 28D, and a 29D. Awesome. And you can see that many of these coins are in pretty remarkable shape for 1920s. Look at that 1925. This one looks like it might even have some little bit of red and luster still on it, and the detail is remarkable. So that is probably an XF verging almost uh, on an AU. And yeah, it's got a little bit of luster. Not, I wouldn't say red necessarily, but you can see spots on the surface of this coin that haven't gone completely brown for a 1925. Just remarkable. 
Next row down here, we've got 1930, 1930 Denver, 31, 32 Denver, 34 Denver. That one's a little bit toasty. 35, again, that's a beautiful coin. Look at that, lots of detail. Same thing with that 35 Denver. 36, 36 Denver. Got to bring that back into focus here. 36 San Francisco, still lots of detail on these coins, just incredible. 37 Denver, 37 San Francisco. 38, 38 Denver. And a 39 San Francisco. Lots of mint marks in here. Uh, which is just really, really cool. And I don't have any of these coins, just to let you know. At this point in time, all of these were ones that I just identified that I didn't have. So Nicole was able to give me a list. She said, here's what I've got in terms of duplicates. I went through and uh, it looks like she has pretty much set everything that she had on her list. I told her that I needed, which is just incredible. And just at the very bottom of the board here, we've got a 1940 Denver in beautiful shape and a 1949 San Francisco. And then there were a couple of other ones that Nicole sent in here. She said she couldn't quite identify them, um, but we can probably take a look under the scope to see what the years are here. They're worn, so I'll throw this first one up under the scope and we'll see if we can positively ID it. So it's definitely heavily circulated and worn. I think that's gonna be a 1950. Dean. That's what it looks like. I don't see the, don't see a mint mark. So if we're looking at it on the face, I think that is what it is. I think it's a 1915. That's really cool. So if that's the case, that means now I have two 1915s, which means that if I wanted to trade for some, for a, a coin with someone who needed 1915 as another really hard date to get just because it's so old, I've got something for trade now too. That's really cool. We'll take a look at this other one. Let's see what we got here. All right, this one's gonna be a little harder. I can't quite tell. So what do you think this is? I think this might be a two, just because I'm seeing more detail sort of down here as opposed to a one. And this last one, that looks like it could be an eight or a three. It could be a zero. I'm not sure. So this is a 19 something. Um, and uh, you've had a chance to take a look at it. So sometimes it's just easier to look at it head on like this. And it looks like from here, it looks like it could even have a mint mark. And it looks like it might be a one. It could be a 1918 with a mint mark, maybe a D. I'm going to have to, we'll put it back under the scope and we'll see if we can get a better sense. All right. So we're taking another look and I think, think that this is a teens as I look a little bit more closely uh, and you probably saw this before when I showed it and we're like what are you talking about that's not a 20s but um here's the one here and I think that is a one there as well and then there are some things that we can use as sort of diagnostics this looks like a d mint mark and up here I couldn't tell if this is maybe a zero or an eight well if it was a Denver mint mark, it can't be a 1910 because there was no 1910 Denver. Um, there was only a 1910 Philadelphia with no mint mark or San Francisco with the S. So I think this is not a 1910 because this really does look like a D. So this could be a 1918. So this could be an eight year, in which case it could be a Denver mint mark. So either way, it is a super cool coin. We'll just look at it again here. And I think that might be it. I think it might be a 1918. If it was a 1910 San Francisco, that's a key date. But it's a little bit harder to tell. Tell me what you think. What is this? Is this a 1910 San Francisco or a 1918 Denver? Or is it something completely different? And I'm just way off the mark on that. Let me know. So here's the bird's eye view again of everything that we got from Nicole. Thank you so much. That was just awesome. Tons of fun to go through old pennies and every single one of these is going to fill a gap in my collection. So I've got a couple of things that I need to do now. One, I've got to get my end of the trade together and send it off to Wisconsin 
so that Nicole can have as much fun as I did. I'm going to send her some Canadian cents, some older Canadian cents, including a bunch of King George V. Again, coins that Nicole would be extremely hard pressed to find in coin roll hunting or even in coin shops in Wisconsin. They might be harder to come by. So I'm going to help her out. She sent me a whole bunch of amazing coins. I'm going to try and return the favor and hopefully she'll have as much fun as I did going through those coins when she gets them. So I, I don't want to make her wait too long for that. She's already waited and I've already got these coins. The other thing I need to do is to incorporate these coins into my collection. And I think some of you know that I have, for some of the Canadian coins, I have some beautiful Lighthouse Vista albums that I put my coins in. But uh, for my American coins, I don't have any albums and I don't know that there is an American Penny album in the Lighthouse lineup. So I might need to look a little bit further afield to find something. I'd love to get some suggestions on how I should be storing these coins, particularly an album. Another American who I've done lots of trades with, Greg, is always on me for getting good quality albums. Uh, I think he cringes every time he sees my, my binder with my 2 by 2 flips. I'll show you that in just a second. And, uh, and I understand, Greg. I'm working on it. So... I'd love to get uh, everyone's thoughts, including Greg's, on what album I should get to put my American Sense in. So before I flip these up in two by twos and slap them in that album, which some of you think is a bit of a crude way to store coins, and, and I think it's perfectly fine, but uh, for a collection that just got so much better uh, with a lot of these older scents, I think it would be really worthy of putting in an album. So let me know what you use and let me know what you'd suggest. And to give you some guidance on, on suggestions, I'd prefer not to put them in little Whit Whitman folders because I want to be able to see both sides of the coins. So a good quality album where I can uh, display and pull up my coins uh, would be fantastic. So let me know what you think I should do. So here's my US penny binder. You can see that I've printed up a little custom uh, picture on the spine there so I can see what it is. I tend to lay these flat because the coins are heavy in the pages. And this is just a binder I got from Staples. And here are my pages. And what you can see here is um, my wheat scents starting in the teens and into the 20s. And there's a lot of empty spots. In fact, the only one from the 20s I have is a 1929S that I found coin roll hunting in October. And uh, not much else. And there's a 1920 something that doesn't have a legible date. And then I've got a handful in the 30s, but that's it. There's a lot of empty spaces here. So if I could find a better way to store these coins in a beautiful album, I think I'd be happy. Greg would be happy. So let me know what you think I should do to replace this binder. Once again, I want to give a huge shout out to Nicole for sending me these coins all the way from Wisconsin. Thank you so much, Nicole, for reaching out to me and proposing a trade. I really appreciate it. And I think it was a lot of fun for me. And I hope it's going to be a lot of fun for you. And for those of you who are watching, who are interested in doing a trade like this, I highly recommend it. I think one of the things you could do, you could even use this video perhaps as a forum to try and connect with other collectors. Use the comment section, let folks know if you're interested in a trade and hopefully you can connect. The thing about trading of course is that you need to be able to trust the other person on the trade. Obviously Nicole has sent them to me and I haven't sent her anything back yet. So she needs to be able to trust that I'm gonna do that. And it's perhaps a little bit easier being that I'm a YouTube um, channel content creator because um, she could easily hold me accountable if I don't hold up my end of the bargain. But I think starting a conversation with some folks in the comment section of any of my videos is probably a good place to get started and then maybe take that offline and see what you can do. In any case, I really hope you enjoyed this video of uh, seeing a coin trade. If you did, please give the video a like. I'd really appreciate that. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Cat Roll Hunter, why haven't you done that yet? Just go ahead and click the subscribe button. You can be notified of when my next videos come out. I have videos coming out all the time. It's often about coin roll hunting. Sometimes it's about trades. Sometimes it's about collections that I've purchased or uh, special items that I've found or things I've gotten from the mint. I just love sharing all this stuff with you guys. So do that. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. The sponsors of today's video are Lighthouse Canada and the Charlton Press. 
Lighthouse Canada is the leading supplier of high-quality numismatic supplies in Canada, and the Charlton Press is the leading publisher of coin and paper money catalogs and price guides for Canadian collectors. Go check out their online stores today and use the exclusive discount code CRH20 for 20% off all your purchases. Now I just gotta pick out the best of the best here for Nicole. I hope she's gonna like them.